मैं नहीं मत आओ न बमन मत आ He has the mother, but no father. <laughs> And he said, uh, "My father is alive, but my mother is not alive. She's dead." <laughs> is it safe? Chigarellam, man, me agat amachu na garmat. Okay. Sometimes they drunk older street kids. Um, mm -hmm. People they drunk and they hit us. Many al magub taga ni al chu ba yekam. Okay. They beg from restaurants, rubbish, anywhere. So they eat that. They survive with that. They say. Farah and Majid left their homes in the countryside when their families, wrecked by AIDS and malaria, could no longer feed them. They came looking for food and a job. Instead, they found suffering and disease. But when I asked if they wished to return home, they said no. They won't stay here. Why? 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 Lemon. Okay, he said uh, my family are really poor mm -hmm. and nothing to do there. I have seen it. What kind of future waited for them in Addis? I asked a group of older street children if they had found an easier way to survive. Huh? His friend said that he had no idea where he would find food next. When I would be hungry, mm. yes, I just cry. I just go to church and he say, he say, I just cry and I just cry. I just cry. If you are the poorest of the poor, you are so far down at, at the, uh, the worst of situations. You cannot even think of talking to someone for help. You know, uh, it takes something, some strength from inside to apply for, for help, and these people don't have it. Society has pretty much abandoned them to the bare uh, hardships of uh, nature. It's like a zoo. In a zoo, the weakest animal uh, becomes uh, the target of the strongest, you know, um, uh, biting and uh, harassing and uh, uh, pursuing and so forth. The same thing happens in the underworld of the street children population. So when communities fell apart, when families were devastated, what do you have? A crisis. But it's a crisis that Hope has tackled head-on. Six days a week, a truckload of food arrives at Hope's downtown cafeteria. In a few short hours, Hope feeds upwards of 1,000 people. In a nation of 75 million, Hope is their only soup kitchen. Our agenda should be to help people so that they can help themselves. So the next thing we do is we go right into education. They are poor not only uh, physically but also spiritually. The things that you and, and I consider unacceptable are acceptable for them. For instance, stealing is acceptable for them. Lying is acceptable. So we felt we need to teach them social norms that would make them accepted by the community. From nursery to secondary school, Hope currently instructs 700 children in values-based education. They also teach skills like computers and construction suited to Ethiopia's developing economy. Pretty much all of our students in those programs make it to college.
But Dr. Hurry concedes that the biggest challenge in improving the lives of Ethiopia street children is getting them to believe that a better life is possible. I asked Farah and Majid what they hoped to become. Majid hoped to make money by carting trash to local dumps. He was saving what he could to buy the cart. One day soon, Majid told me, he would get his chance.